Yeah, I mean, he was oh. revolting. It was a oh. pulp. Travolta. <laughs> <laughs> Doing a polka. It was amazing. Oh. If you consider the size of Phil Ingemelz's legs, it was like... Legs like timber! It was on his legs like... It was like a couple of giant redwood moving. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Just larch on the move. <laughs> Not lurch, larch. Larch. Uh, anyway, uh, my next guess, as we all know... Oh, whoops, I've got the wrong page. Oh, there Come we on, go. Lisa. OK, uh, obviously, welcome back. And here we're asking you to grasp the family white up. Yes, if you know anything juicy about the whites from Ghoul, then simply call us on all the usual numbers there. I think you uh, know them. Have you ever seen Mum eating fruit in the supermarket before weighing it? Then we want to know about it. But here is what's still to come on this morning's show. Ah, oh, does Dad have a hilarious birthmark on his buttocks? <laughs> I do. That's still to come on this morning's show. Uh, coming up, why buy a paper when we bring you the best stories there are? All it's two the of them. paper review and the fun <laughs> after the news. Uh, then at 8.20, we launch into an epic encounter with Star Wars favourite Anthony Daniels. That's C-3PO. <laughs> <laughs> See, I was a robot then. And at 8.30, we'll be road testing. Oh, I was a robot. <laughs> Look, I'm a robot. Look, I'm, a I'm a robot. I'm a robot now. <laughs> Uh, three big breakfast wannabes who are battling out for a debut slot on Friday's show in our latest feature that we are, we are calling Can't Present, Won't Present. <laughs> <laughs> Very interesting, but right now it's a story of my life. Gale. <laughs> <laughs> big breakfast news and weather. Yes. Good morning, these are the main stories on Monday, the 10th of April. His film's the best, but he's not the best director. Wondering why was Puffy puffed out? And the goal from Poyet points Chelsea to the final. In the case of snubbing, not blubbing at this year's BAFTA Film Awards in London, one film did particularly well, but it didn't get all that the awards anticipated. Uh, Steve Dixon reports. Britain's big night for cinema, and the big question was, how closely would the show resemble this year's Oscars? The differences included a Best British Film Award for East is East and a Best Supporting Actor Award for Jude Law for the talented Mr Ripley. But from then on, the script was almost the same. American Beauty swept the board with six prizes, including Best Film and the top two acting honours. Annette Benning sent co-star Mina Savari to get hers, but Kevin Spacey made up for Benning's absence with a classic bit of loviness. And tonight, I have to say that when I step before a camera, I am grateful for every single moment of my stupid little life. Thank you. One upset, Spanish director Pedro Almodóvar got the best director honour instead of our own Oscar winning Sam Mendes. Sam wasn't happy and it surprised everyone, including Lifetime Achievement winner and new BAFTA member Michael Caine. They do make some strange choices though, don't they? I mean, I've been sitting here all evening. Jesus, Jesus, that's funny. That's funny. Now I'm a member of them. <laughs> and they'll be hell to pay. Crisis in Ethiopia is getting even more desperate. Humanitarian groups say that thousands of starving families are now being forced to walk for up to seven days to find food and water. Tons of aid is arriving in the country, but aid agencies are struggling to get it to the needy. 10% of girls lose their virginity before they are 13, and almost half did so before they were 16, according to a new magazine survey out this morning. More than half of the 500 girls questioned said they'd had unprotected sex, and one in 10 had had an abortion. There's confusion surrounding Puff Daddy's last-minute cancellation of Saturday night's performance at Wembley Arena. Some reports say that only half of the venue's tickets have been sold, but rumour also has it that Puffy might have been feeling worse for where after a rather good party the previous night. Here's the sport. Chelsea are through to this year's FA Cup final after a hard-fought battle with Newcastle at Wembley. The Blues went ahead after 17 minutes thanks to a goal from Gustavo Poyet. In the second half, Shearer's cross found Robert Lee, who headed home to draw things level, but with 18 minutes remaining, Poyet nabbed his second, giving Chelsea a 2-1 victory and a return trip to Wembley to face Aston Villa. Here's the way the weather looks. Temperatures should range from 9 Celsius in Glasgow to 14 in London. Expect cloud and rain over Scotland and Northern Ireland, especially this afternoon. Everywhere else will stay dry with sunny spells and light winds. Here's the five-day forecast. Scotland and Northern Ireland can expect a run of wet weather with chilly winds. Northern and Central regions will be cold and cloudy with some quite heavy rain. And the south can also expect lots of showers, with temperatures dropping throughout the week.
Big Breakfast News 803, back now to Johnny and Lisa for the newspaper. Reservation. Yeah, Look, I've had it out with you guys. Uh, oh, good morning, don't. Phil. Thank you very much indeed. You're Phil it's Gale, more to life Phil. than human reason, John. There certainly Do you know what I mean? There, there has to be, otherwise why are we here? Do you know what, Lisa? There's no escape from the human condition. Yeah, and that's sure. one of the lessons of the film The Castle, to rent now on video. Do you know what? I can hear a cry. Read, Read all about it! Read all about it! Read I really need your attention this morning, yeah? Because the, the stories are so good. <laughs> OK, uh, uh, Donna is holding the mail. Prison escape, IRA man oh. sues for £50,000. An IRA terrorist demands £50,000 conversation from the Home Office. He claims he was beaten by prison officers upon his recapture after a prison escape, during which one prison warder was mm. shot. Uh, let's go to the Times. Poor pupils rejected by top colleges despite efforts to make entry to top universities less, less socially exclusive. A new study apparently shows children from poor areas only have a 1% chance of getting a place compared to the 25% chance for pupils from independent schools. Mm. Uh, let's go to the Telegraph. This is multi-faith coronation for Charles. A report commissioned by the government says the coronation oath in which the monarch swears to uphold the Protestant faith may longer be appropriate in a multiculturalist society. Mm. Uh, of course, they've got to ask the other face if they want Prince Charles to represent them. Uh, personally, I don't see why on earth they would. <coughs> I don't see what religious significance Prince Charles has. I mean, I'm not going to go in there, but I don't see, you know, ask him first. Uh, do you know what? I'm going to get in there. Yeah. Yeah. He wants to be ahead of all faiths, I bet. Okay, here we go. Who wants it, though? I don't know, but they're, you know, they're making it out like it's too exclusively Protestant. But I, I, I mean, anyway, I'm going to get in there, because that's heavy. Well, get in there. That's that heavy is heavy. Just get in and I'll there. come across like a pseudo anti disestablishment area. Anyway, L driver Rita Hengster failed her first test. These are two hilarious driving tales from Germany. I'm going to regale you this morning. <laughs> oh, good. L learner driver Rita Hengster failed her first test after hitting a lamppost. Uh, then she uh, failed a second for crashing into a parked car. Rita, 37 from Stuttgart, finally passed on her third attempt. But you know what? When they told her she'd passed, she died of a heart attack. Oh, no! It's unbelievable, isn't it? Well, sure, Rita's calm. You're laughing, yes, because comedy is tragedy plus distance in this case. Yeah. OK, um, and this is another one. A man, age 51, this is in Germany again, sank six pints of ale, then he nicked a kiddie's trike, and he got a taxi to tow him home. <laughs> that on is the fabulous. And, uh, and then he's been charged now with drunk riding, <laughs> which is a charge in Germany. Well, I suppose if you go around a corner, the natural camber is, is that you lean out. Just, I'm sorry, but there's this little I know. idiot I face look. poking round here. Just come round. <laughs> Benny, what are you doing? He got caught, didn't you? What are you doing there? <laughs> why are you hiding there? But actually, you know why? <laughs> oh, right. oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what I've done there is blown uh, something yeah. quite big. I just saw these little eyes. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, we haven't got a cat. Um, here's another story for you. Uh, this is uh, the, the voice of reason in the mail, as usual. Uh, letters pages. What a joy. A wake-up call for the work shy. This is uh, referring to the fact that uh, a proposal to say that unemployed people, they're going to call them up and they should be there all the time during mm. the day. Mm. Otherwise, where are they? Uh, so male readers responded caged to this. Caged animals. Caged, uh, cage them. Yeah. I, I think it's time almost to bring back uh, what they call the workhouses. Hanging. <laughs> a workhouse. Uh, what a joy! A wake-up call for the workshop. At last, something's to be done about scroungers bleeding the honest taxpayer dry. Oh. No wonder so many people try to avoid taxation. It goes on to say. Oh, loosen uh, up, lady. Yeah, when they can see the kind of people who are getting their cash. Oh, I get it. That's what the reason why they're criminally dodging cash, uh, tax pay. Because they don't want other criminals getting hold of their money. Great reason. Uh, but it says here, surely daily visits to job centres, 24-hour surveillance and electronic, electronic tagging, even imprisonment, could be introduced for those who persistently avoid work while taking all the benefits they can get. Who's that from? Imprisonment. That's shocking, That's from the it? very moderate Mrs Rose Uffick. Uh, and also Melanie Stiller of East Grinstead writes... Why not do away with long summer holidays? If children went to school all year round, it would make life much easier for parents, especially single ones, because they can go out to work and then not claim benefits. Oh, oh, God almighty, I you don't claim it, you scrounge, surely. Uh, work oh. over... F well, here's a, here's a guy who's got 14 jobs. For most people, retirement offers a well-earned rest. Uh, this is Seamus McSporum. Is that guy. real? Yeah, it is real. He is called Seamus McSporran. He's on the Scottish island of Giga, off the Mull of Kintyre. has a population of 100. He has 14 jobs there, including he's the policeman, he's shopkeeper, postman, insurance <laughs> agents, rent collector, peer master, register, fire chief, ambulanceman, school bus driver, guest house owner, petrol pump attendant, taxi driver and undertaker. Yeah. So what he really covers it birth to death. 
Seamus is your man. <laughs> uh, he's Big Ben Hanky. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's everyone. Up. It's time to make way for a younger man or men, said McSporran. <laughs> uh, Giga is a special place, and for the right person, it's the right job, or as many jobs as they can take on. Do you know what? This is smells to me like a BBC One Sunday night show, doesn't it? <laughs> Seamus McSporran. <laughs> Can't you see it with Nick Berry? Oh, oh. oh. great, great idea. idea. Coming please. up after Songs of Praise. Another trip to Giga with Seamus McSporran. <laughs> uh, perfect vehicle for Nick Berry. Uh, we could uh, follow him as he and his girlfriend, uh, Kitty McBride, <laughs> uh, an expert in gull eggs, uh, stand up to ruthless landowner Tavish McTavish, who wants to redevelop the island into a huge nuclear generated battery. We'll never have it! Chicken farm. Yeah, we'll never have we'll it! We'll never have it! <laughs> yeah. On your way! You've got the part! Yeah, thanks very much! I can the play Scottish the young... people won't be uh, insulted that I got the part, will they? No, not at all. <laughs> Me in black watch tartan. Oh, don't it's, a, it, don't, it's a vision. On a cliff with a red head. <laughs> Collecting eggs. <laughs> Sucking gold eggs. Oh, I'd love to see that. <laughs> While I'm making up a coffin. Oh, what are you doing? Tavish Mux, sorry, Seamus McSporran. I just, you know what? It's, it's got to be a series. How can it not be a we TV We should do series? it as a series once a week. Oh, and this show here? Yeah, just two minutes a week. Island on the Loch. Lovely. Oh. I, you know I've been gagging. We're going to Bow Loch. <laughs> and you could live in that little God, cabin that I you've really always wanted want out there. To. Oh, you'd love that. Oh, please, oh, please, please, please. please, please. Uh, Jack Straw jumped on his soapbox to open Britain's first supermarket speaker's corner yesterday. The Home Secretary took questions from passers by. Then encourage shoppers to use the stand outside Asda to have their say on everyday issues. <laughs> what interests me here is. Uh, What's going on? What with is that? going on? I'd have told him to shove off. Yeah, I would as well. Oi! Shove you, off. you prat. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Mr. Straw, but this is what's interesting is he's talking about being a system being set up. It says, uh. Mr. Straw wants boxes like the one in Blackburn set up across Britain. Let's have a look. There it is, look. And now let's consider the words again. He wants facilities like that set up. <laughs> <laughs> you mean a, a, a box in a car yeah. park? <laughs> and look, with an upturned shopping trolley behind. And, oh, I tell you what I find doubly interesting about this is how much, once the government gets hold of such a simple scheme, this will cost. <laughs> <laughs> Only this government will be able to spend millions into boxes in car parks. And then someone will probably fall off one. Sue uh, the government because the box didn't have a grippy surface on top. And, and all the Daily Mail readers will be up there. I think it's outrageous that boxes aren't grippy. <laughs> um, oh, go on, shove off. But he wants to set these up. <laughs> <laughs> it's yep. just a box, Jack. Yeah. You put them up anywhere. Uh, anyway, I'm going to carry on uh, going through here. This is uh, uh, a cat. Uh, uh, you're a fan of curiosities. Oh, curiosities. Well, this is most irregular. Uh, but this is something that I think is a great curiosity. Uh, Fruta, a town in Colorado, uh, is erecting a permanent statue to a headless chicken. Nice. Mike, the chicken in question, <laughs> because it's a great name, isn't it? For a headless chicken. That's, Mike. It's perfect. It's perfect, isn't it? Mike, the uh, chicken with no head, became a minor celebrity in the 40s uh, because he survived uh, for 18 months after having his Is head removed head? with an axe. What? Yeah. And he survived for 18 months. A headless chicken called Mike. Most irregular. That makes me want well, to Well, this is very unorthodox, Mike. God, that's A headless awful. chicken, you see? I can't remove my hand. Well, um, but his blood would have kept pumping out. No, he didn't. Not Mike's. Not Mike's when he started running. No. <laughs> Uh, no, it says here, uh, fed directly into his gullet with an eyedropper. What? <laughs> he fed him directly into the throat. What, the murderer that cut its head off in the first place? I don't know. Wow. Uh, but he became uh, a popular attraction on a tour, but he eventually died after choking. No. <laughs> what? <laughs> on it's, scene. It's generally the way that headless chickens die. Uh, on a corn kernel in an Arizona motel. Tried to, tried to it. And that's perhaps what I find most disturbing, is who is the twisted man? <laughs> took that yeah, chicken had a chicken Mike. in a motel room. With no head A headless head. chicken just watching, probably watching a film, feeding it corn kernels. <laughs> I think it was and lucky then, it choked on that. <laughs> choked Awful. on it. But anyway, they're erecting a statue now to Mike. Um, Fruta held its first Mike the Headless Chicken Festival. <laughs> well, they just chopped off lots of chicken's heads. <laughs> um, I've been going out with my boyfriend for over a year now, and he's beginning to drive me crazy sexually. <laughs> but not in a good way. Because uh, we all want that. Um, it says here, when we're alone, he wants sex virtually all the time. He says, it doesn't matter if I'm doing the washing up or sitting down with a cup of tea, he sees any time as the right opportunity for a quickie. P.S. Please forgive the shaky handwriting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I, I might have added that last one. Uh, and the last thing is that the National Health Service is planning to send patients to India. We're not planning this a proposal because it's a lot cheaper. What? Well, I'll give you an example. It costs five thousand pounds to do a heart, heart bypass in the UK, and it costs five hundred quid in India. What is going on? What's going? On? Do you think they're going to be national health flights? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, do you know what? I'm going to do that. Fun down with the pun down. I could have time almost for tabards. I'm going, to, I'm going to wait now to speak to our leader. Leader, what do you think? Go with the pun. At that moment, actually, John, you know I've just realised that. We haven't got no. I haven't got any. I've got sound now. Fantastic. Nice. Uh, first time this morning they've been able to communicate with me. Uh, it's the fun down with the pun down, ladies and yeah. gentlemen. Yeah. I've got a dodgy connection, Sonny. But then again, so have you. Switch. Okay. Uh, start. An early photograph of the founders of Microsoft is something of a geek parade. Mm -hmm. uh, an early photograph of the founders of. Uh, okay. I've got the pun. The pun says. Nerd do wells. Oh, no. Because of course, if you're interested in computers, you must be a nerd. nerd. How rude. Or a dweeb. Mm. Uh, <laughs> Chelsea's two goal hero, Gustavo Poyet, uh, he has captured the punsmith's imagination. A lot of puns around his name today. Uh, the pun festival included He's a Poi Wonder, uh, Poi Zone, uh, and indeed Poi Story 2 in two papers. But eventually, the sun edged it with <laughs> Cooking with Gus. Oh, oh, uh, number one in the pun down comes from the sun. The unemployed in Germany can collect their benefits from cash points. The pun, he say, dole in the wall. Oh. That's, that's the end of the papers and puns, ladies and gentlemen. Later on, we take on the might of the Empire, but don't worry, because Star Wars C3PO actor Anthony Daniels is here to protect us. Yes. And the Big Breakfast is giving you a chance to talk directly to Anthony. Anthony, I should say. All you have to do is call us on 0208 985. Oh, oh, oh thanks, us on. 0208 985. Oh, yeah. Fabulous. Or, of course, email us, but we might ignore you if you do. Okay. Meanwhile, if you like to know how to get your hands on These five big ones... your face now. If you want to get your hands on five big ones, here's how. Yeah. <laughs> to qualify for Wonga and a chance to win £5,000, all you need is a sharp eye. During today's show, we will be planting a gold Wonga bar somewhere in the house. All you have to do is spot it. When you see the gold Wonga bar, simply call 0900 122 and tell us what time you saw the bar and indeed where you saw it. Then simply leave your name and a daytime telephone number. Lines will be open until midday today. Callers must be over 16 and maximum call costs 30 pence and the winners will be announced live on the show on Thursday. Remember to play Wonga, you must be available to come to the Big Breakfast House on Friday. Good luck and keep your eyes peeled. Whoever the slipper fits shall be my princess. Ooh. You jammy little... <laughs> New mini jammy dodgers. Small, but really jammy.